welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you clicked on today's video. I am so excited for today's video because we actually haven't done one of these in like the longest time. I think it's been almost two, oh my gosh, maybe almost three months since we have done a 24 hour readathon. And I love doing those types of videos on my channel. I know you guys enjoy them a lot. So that is what we're going to be doing today. And I have some really fun books picked out. They're actually new releases. So this is going to be a super fun and exciting reading vlog just because we're reading brand new books. Hopefully they end up being good. The three that I picked out for this video are some of my most anticipated releases for 2023. So I'm kind of nervous going into it just because I feel like I've kind of been let down this year when it comes to new releases. So it's going to be an interesting one. But that's what we are doing in today's video. You guys already know the whole shebang. You know how it works. I'm not going to be doing a reading for 24 hours straight video just for like my mental health and like my sanity. This time of year already kind of puts me in a little bit of a rut. So just to save me from going into a deeper rut, in this video, we're going to be seeing how many books I can actually read within 24 hours. So what we're going to do, I'm going to use the stopwatch on my phone and every time we're reading, I'm going to start it. And then anytime I take a break to read, if I take a break to talk to you guys, I take a break to go to bed at night, I'm going to stop the timer. And then whenever I pick up the book again, I'll start it up again. I've done these types of videos a lot my channel so if you guys want to see like previous ones and how they kind of work definitely go check those out because they do get a little crazy believe it or not that is the plan for today's video and I've already picked out our first book it is a brand new release I believe it just came out in November and it is love redesigned by Miss Lauren Asher I am so excited to read this Lauren Asher has become one of my favorite authors of 2023 I read her dirty air series and then I also read her dreamland billionaire series Series. Guys, if you have not read the Dreamland Billionaire series, Chef's Kiss. I am obsessed with that series. I still think about the Kane Brothers daily. Literally one of my favorite series of 2023 and it's kind of like a play off of Disney. So if you like Disney movies, if you like Disney World, Disneyland, if you like amusement parks, that series is like made for you because it literally just feels like you're in Disney reading it and it's like the best feeling ever. So I absolutely love that series. I love Lauren Asher's writing style. It's very easy going. It's super, super fast paced. But yeah, this is our first read of today's vlog. I am very excited. Hello. Whenever the camera comes out, Osiris also comes out. <laughs> got the annotation tools. So we are going to be starting off with Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher. This is actually the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition and it includes special content. So I think there's like a bonus epilogue at the end. This is about Julian and Dahlia. They're like childhood rivals slash best friends. Their families are super, super close. Everything's always a competition between the two of them. And then they end up going to the same college together. And I don't know what happens when they go to college, but the two of them almost turn into enemies more than rivals. Rivals, I think and we kind of watch how it plays out. Julian is also a billionaire. I think he does I don't want to say real estate. I think he does something more than real estate I think part of his job is real estate But I also think he likes to go in and actually fix up the houses. Dahlia is also in a similar field She is like an interior designer. I think it's kind of giving off like those home improvement vibes I'm trying to think of a show where they flip houses I think there's one that's called like fixer upper. They basically fix up houses and flip them So that's the vibe I'm kind of getting from this right now. I actually haven't read like a fixer-upper type of romance before So this is gonna be really really exciting. We are gonna hop right into it I'm gonna set my little stopwatch. I have my little annotation supplies here I picked out some pretty book tabs for the most part They're just like purple because I feel like that matches the best But I did throw in these two blue ones just in case just because I get questions all the time on what I use for annotating in my books My favorite highlighters to use are by Mr. Penn these are absolutely amazing and they don't bleed through the pages, which is super super important And then the pens I use they're called right tech I don't really know if they're like popular pens or not But these are just the ones that I use when it comes to annotating I do have all my annotation supplies linked in my amazon storefront I am going to start a little timer and we're going to jump right into love redesigned I am so excited but also nervous. I feel like I haven't done a lot of reading lately So i'm hoping this vlog kind of throws me back into it. I feel like i've almost been in a reading slump since we got back from like all our holiday travels but hopefully this like gets me out of that slump i'm gonna stop rambling we're gonna hop right into it
So something I'm noticing right away, we are literally only on page seven. We're not even that far yet, but there's like a lot of Spanish in this book and I think it's really cool. She actually has the translation right at the bottom of the page and I don't know why, but I think that's really cool and fun to like have a different language in the book. That's definitely one of the first things that's standing out to me and that I'm low-key really liking about it and I hope it continues throughout the story and we get to see a lot more Spanish used. Cause then I also feel like I'm learning a little touch of Spanish and I really like that, but we're gonna keep going. I'm literally only in chapter one. <laughs> So far, we're kind of just getting to know a little bit more about Dahlia and Julian, kind of what they do for work and where they're coming from and how they basically get thrown back together after I think almost a decade of being apart. Dahlia has been living in San Francisco since college, kind of doing her own thing. She came up with her own business called Dahlia Designs and basically she does interior design. She has a TV show and a home decor line, just like all the super cool stuff. It actually just gave me a second to think about how 2023 is literally coming to a close. I don't know where this year went. I feel like it flew by so stinking fast and it's crazy to think about because I'm closing out my first year as a small business owner, which is absolutely crazy. If you guys didn't know, I run a brand called Ray of Happiness with Chris and it's just so crazy to think that this year is coming to a close and we've been running it for about a year now. So I'm always getting questions about Ray of Happiness. I'm always getting questions about YouTube. I'm getting asked for tips and tricks on it. My best advice that I can give you guys out there who are going into 2024 wanting to turn your dreams into reality is Skillshare, which happens to be the sponsor of today's video. You guys already know I am such a big Skillshare girly. I talk about them all the time on my channel because I genuinely love their platform and use it all the time. I've used Skillshare for so many different things in my life. I got married last year and I did a lot of DIY classes on Skillshare. I've also taken social media classes with Skillshare, but the possibilities with with Skillshare are literally endless. There are so many different classes and things to choose from. If you've never heard of Skillshare before though, they are an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members who come together to find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey. It's a great place to get inspired, learn new skills, and put them to work in impactful ways. And the thing I love most about Skillshare is that they wanna make the creative life possible for everyone around the world. Skillshare literally has classes that range from all different types of topics. They Basically, whatever you're looking for, Skillshare probably has. Their classes are led by industry pros who have walked the walk in an active community of members ready to cheer you on. So the learning path I took on Skillshare is grow your online business with marketing fundamentals. The first class was build your dream business, craft your purpose and online presence. And then the second one was boost your dream business, land your ideal clients with lead magnets. I cannot recommend them enough to you guys and I have an incredible, incredible offer for you all. The first 500 people to use use my link down below, we'll get one month free of Skillshare, which means you get access to thousands of classes off of Skillshare. If you've been around for a while, you already know. I literally rave about them all the time on my channel. But with that being said, we are gonna keep going. I'm on chapter seven right now. We've been reading for almost two hours. It's been an hour and 38 minutes, and I just got to chapter 11, page 189. Literally so fast paced, it's not even funny. I lie through her book so far we're still kind of like in the beginning part of it all like I don't want to say we're still like setting the whole story up but in a way we're still getting to know Dahlia and Julian and we're getting to know what they do for work and kind of learning their relationship and why they're kind of like rivals but also have this little enemies thing going on. Dahlia's home in Lake Wisteria. She has been living in San Fran for I think almost 10 years now doing her TV show really building up her brand Dahlia Design. So she's home now after some crazy crazy stuff kind 
kind of went down back in San Fran. And now we're just kind of watching her and Julian kind of figure out their relationship to each other. There's been a lot of going back and forth, a lot of banter between the two of them, which I've really been enjoying. I have to say, I think my favorite characters in this story so far though are actually Julian and Dahlia's moms because they grew up being best friends and they are literally so funny together. The things they say to their kids, low-key unhinged and absolutely hilarious. I'm kind of waiting for like a keen cameo for some reason. I just know it's going to happen because Lake Wisteria is a small town. So I'm just like waiting. We actually got to meet Julian in the final offer and him and Cal were really funny together at the end of that book. You were really wondering why Julian was like such a grumpy billionaire. So going into this, I kind of already knew what to expect from Julian and we are getting a lot of backstory on him and Dahlia. So you kind of understand why he is the way he is. Anyways, I'm kind of just waiting for that like cameo and I'm really excited because that is something that Lauren Asher has done in like all of her books. In the Dreamland Billionaire series, you actually get to hear the couples from the Dirty Air series. They'll randomly pop up. I'm waiting to see like the Dreamland Billionaire boys. But yeah, nothing crazy just yet. There is a house in Lake Wisteria that Dahlia is going to be kind of helping out doing the interior design with. So is Julian. So I think that's kind of interesting and it's gonna maybe, you know, spice up the story because these two people who basically can't stand being near each other without saying some crazy outrageous thing to the other are now being thrown into a project together. I'm hoping this chapter, like the next chapter, we maybe kind of get into something. I'm gonna start up the timer again. We're gonna keep going, see what happens. Hopefully something happens. <laughs> I also forgot to talk to you guys about the Spotify playlist for this book. So in the beginning of it, one thing I was a little bit disappointed about when it came to the whole design of this book, definitely the playlist in the beginning because the Dirty Air series and the Dreamland Billionaire series have like these really beautiful playlist pages where all the songs are displayed. But for this one, she actually just has like a little scanner code that you scan with your phone and then it will bring up the playlist. There's actually five playlists that were curated for this book specifically. When I went in to actually scan this, it didn't work. I had to go into my Spotify and actually look up like the playlist. So that was kind of a downside to it. I also like when the songs are like displayed in the book itself because I just think it's really cool. With that being said, I've actually been listening to the Love Redesign playlist for this book. It literally slaps. I love it. I don't always listen to the playlist when reading because sometimes I just feel like I get really distracted. I've actually been listening to the playlist while reading this and I feel like the the vibes. The vibes are low-key immaculate. Listening to the music and reading, it's definitely a move and I definitely recommend it. There's also some Sabrina Carpenter in here, which I am loving. Anyways, I want to mention that really quick and I don't always listen to music when I'm reading, but I just want to let you guys know that the playlist for this book, definitely a hit. So I just finished chapter 15 and okay I feel like things may be happening now and like chapter 15 wasn't anything crazy but some crazy stuff kind of happened and I feel like it's going to now lead to like some extra exciting crazy stuff. I feel like I have to do a spoiler reading vlog sometime soon on my channel because not doing spoilers in a video is so hard because when I read something like crazy I literally just want to talk about it and I can't because I don't want to spoil the book for you but chapter 15 was really really fun but also scary, but really funny. Five hours and 15 minutes and I'm actually almost done with this book. We're on chapter 45, page four. 
22. I just want to do a quick little update before we wrap up the book. I think it's really cute. I think it's a good first book in a series. It's definitely not something I'm like obsessing over and I'm not like obsessing over Julian and Dahlia and I do think the Dreamland Billionaire series is partially to blame for this because I just loved that series so much and I loved those characters in it. So going into this book I had very high expectations of course. I do like it. I think it's really cute. Like I said a good first installment in a new series. Julian and Dahlia are very cute together. I like the little banter between the two of them and there have been certain parts of this book where I get to a point and I'm just like okay like when is it gonna like happen? Just like the exciting part of the story. Hear me out. I think it's because I have been reading fantasy books all of November so I think jumping into a romance book after reading some of my favorite fantasy books ever I'm like bored. I'm like where's the action and excitement and the magic? Where's like the passion? I feel like there's passion but at the same time I just don't feel it and I don't really feel like their connection that much and their chemistry just I don't know it's just not hitting for me for some reason. Nonetheless I think this is really cute. I still am really enjoying it. There's been a lot of cute moments between the two of them. Not a lot of like notable quotes. Like I haven't been annotating this as much as I usually do when it comes to romance romance book. There was a pretty funny scene that we just came up on as well that again I am living for Julian and Dahlia's mothers because they are just so funny. They're honestly like the highlight of this entire story because they're so comical in the things they say. Something else I'm also really enjoying about this book is definitely like the home improvement vibes and I love reading about Julian and Dahlia kind of working together to restore this house. We are reaching the end of the book. I think we have like a hundred pages left left waiting to see like what happens and what Dahlia decides on and what she chooses because right now everything is kind of depending on her. Dahlia is a little annoying. She's definitely not like my favorite. I do partially blame it on the Dreamland Billionaire series. I do partially blame it on my little fantasy binger that I went on last month and I feel like I'm still on a high from all those books. So yeah we are going to finish this up. We have a hundred pages to go and then we will talk reviews and ratings. I also want to check the ratings on Goodreads and maybe read some other people's reviews and see what other people thought about it. I really want to jump in to this next romance because it's another one of my favorite authors and it's another book I have high hopes for. So we're gonna wrap this up and jump into it. Okay guys, we finished up Love Redesigned by Miss Lauren Asher. I can't believe it. We flew through this book. So let's take a look at the timer. We are at six hours and 22 minutes. And this was 520 pages, I think I said. So I'm really torn on my rating for this book right now. I'm torn between a 3.5 and a 4 star rating. What I really loved about this book is the small town trope. I loved the minor enemies to lovers slash rivals to lovers that we get. The banter in the beginning of the book. It was just so cute. I was living for it. I was living for their mothers. Again, I love like the family setting in this story. I just love that their families were so close. I love the whole like home and improvement theme in this. I loved watching Julian and Dahlia kind of tackle this really beautiful historic house together. I love, love, love Lake Wisteria. I've been in love with this town since the final offer. It just has like such a special place in my heart. I think in the book it says it's actually a place in Michigan. I don't know if it's like an actual named location in Michigan, but it's in Michigan basically. I didn't annotate this as much as I thought I was going to annotate it. I just didn't read like a ton of quotes that I was like madly in love with and obsessing over but I did annotate a little bit. There are some very swoon worthy quotes in here especially from Julian. Lauren Asher just writes like the best male main characters. They are always just so swoon worthy. They know all the perfect things to say to get the girl. I did end up going on to Goodreads and seeing what other people were saying and rating it. Everyone is rating this 
book between four and five stars. Everyone is loving this book and I can totally see why I see the hype around it and I see why people are madly, madly in love with these two characters. I think I'm gonna land on a 3.5 star rating. Wasn't obsessed and madly in love with this book and partially blame like my November reading wrap up because I was reading all fantasy books in November and I felt going into this I was kind of getting into a reading slump so I feel like that's why I just wasn't getting obsessed with this the entire time I was reading it I did find myself getting a little bit bored I was kind of waiting for something exciting to happen or some action to happen and it's a romance book you know it's a cutie sappy romance book like I should have known better that's what we are landing on again Lauren Asher is one of my favorite authors of 2023 I am obsessed with the Dreamland Billionaire series I know I've said it like a gazillion times in this video already but I could not recommend that series enough it just is a series I cannot stop thinking about the second book in the series is going to be about Rafa Lopez who is Julian's cousin and he's like a grumpy single dad and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a love story between him and his nanny and I cannot wait for that this is adorable highly recommend Lauren Asher books in general she's an incredible author moving on to our next read in the video I am so excited for this book and I actually pulled out like a whole bunch of stuff to like share with you guys the next book we're gonna be hopping into is check and mate by Allie Hazelwood this is her newest release this is actually her YA debut and it's supposed to be about like chess rivals falling in love so I'm really really excited about this I've never read a story that like revolves around chess and that's really interesting to me because growing up I loved playing chess it was one of my favorite things one of my favorite hobbies as a kid Allie Hazelwood is another one of my favorite favorite authors she is the author of the love hypothesis love on the brain love theoretically I'm obsessed with her writing her characters it's just so fun she's also like the queen of writing woman in stem and I love reading about that stuff especially reading after the first book the love hypothesis I just fell in love with that whole trope and storyline so I love Allie Hazelwood and her writing style is also super fun felt like I was learning like little science things and science terms along the way of reading them so I am really excited for this I think I'm gonna love this one to be honest just because it's about chess and it's another rivals type of trope and like I mentioned in love redesigned I love that trope so much there's just something so fun about it and I love like the competition that comes with it and the banter so this is gonna be about Mallory and Nolan Nolan is like the king of chess apparently he wins all the tournaments and he's also like a hot shot I think like everyone is obsessed with him and then Mallory I think might be a little bit younger than him and she used to do a lot of chess tournaments when she was younger but she kind of stopped at some point just because of family troubles she kind of had to step up and take care of her family for a little bit until one day her friend basically convinces her to come to this chess tournament because it's supposed to be for charity Mallory agrees and she ends up facing off against Nolan who is the king of chess and she beats him and I guess everything changes from that point on. So this is what the cover looks like. Absolutely stunning. I'm such a sucker for cutie little pink covers. I think all of her covers are honestly adorable. But I was able to get my hands on the Afterlight edition of Check and Mate, which if you're not familiar, they're like a romance book subscription service and they have like special editions of a bunch of popular romance books. This is what the hardcover looks like. It literally has a little quote on it. I am living for this. Absolutely stunning. And then can we just take a moment to appreciate these beautiful sprayed edges. All of the little chess pieces on here. This is stunning. This is what the normal like dust jacket looks like. I actually have it on the reversed way because the art style is one of my favorites. This is what it looks like. How cute is this? And then the back of it. Absolutely adorable. This is so beautiful and wholesome. They're literally playing chess and I love it. And I was actually very fortunate to get the love theoretically version as well. How stunning is she? And she's got the edges. It's so minimalistic and cute. Along with this one, I actually got it in a little book box. So it came with these cutie little pins that actually correlate to the love hypothesis, love on the brain, and then love theoretically. And then I also was very excited about this, but I was able to get the dust jackets for love on the brain and the love hypothesis. I don't have the correct 
like books for them just yet. They're very hard to find and if I do find them, they are very, very expensive. But here is Love on the Brain. How beautiful is this one? I love Bee in this book because of her hair. Like her hair is so beautiful. And then we also have the Love Hypothesis, which is the OG. Hopefully one day I will be able to get my hands on the correct format. But with that being said, we are going to jump right into check in me. It looks like this is creeping around 350 pages. This is actually a book that I've kind of seen iffy reviews on because a lot of people were saying that it's very chest heavy and they just weren't ready for that. Like that's what I'm really excited about. Like I'm kind of going into it hoping that it's chest heavy because that's like kind of my expectations for it. We are going to start up the timer and hop right into it. update i'm finally getting a second to like sit down and make a good dent in this book today was a pretty busy day total we've only been reading for seven hours and 10 minutes i have made it to chapter seven at page 74 we haven't really done too much in it just yet it's still kind of setting it all up but i will say so far i am really into it and i'm enjoying the storyline even though we're not like in it just yet we're just starting to get into the main storyline i'm really enjoying it and i'm really enjoying the whole like chess factor of it all mallory is joining like a chess club we're kind of seeing her jump back into playing chess after not playing it for so long and it's really interesting it's really fun i'm already loving it even though nothing crazy has happened just yet i'm already like sucked into it and that's what i love about ali hazelwood's writing is she just sucks you in so fast i'm excited to keep going i'm hoping to make a pretty big dent in it tonight maybe get to page 150 maybe 200 200 might be ambitious because i'm kind of tired but we are going to keep reading it see it what happens we haven't seen too much of nolan just yet and i'm really excited to see how him and mallory kind of get thrown together Hi guys, I made a pretty good dent in the book. I'm on page 203, chapter 17. We're like more than halfway through this already. Coming up on the 10 hour mark, which is super exciting. I don't know what it is with Allie Hazelwood books, but I feel like it takes me forever to get through them. I have to say, I am like low-key obsessed with this already. And I know we still have like a good 100, 150 pages to go, but I feel like this may be a five-star read for me. I think I talked a little bit about it when we started this book, but when I was looking at reviews of it, I feel like it was kind of half and half. People were either really enjoying this or they just didn't really care for it. I checked Goodreads and a lot of people were saying that they didn't like how chess heavy it was. A lot of people were also complaining about this being a YA book. They feel like it's not really YA appropriate. I personally don't see like any problems with it, especially coming from Allie Hazelwood. If you're familiar with her other books, this is definitely reading as like a YA read. And then the ages of Mallory and Nolan in this, I think Mallory is 18 and Nolan is 20. And that was something else people were complaining about. We're going to keep going and see what happens in this last little chunk and then at the end of it when I'm giving my review I'll probably revisit the YA talk just because I thought that was really interesting. Nonetheless aside from all of that this is not a heavy romance by all means but I am loving every second of it nonetheless. I love the whole chess aspect. I love how chess heavy it is. You're literally getting like play-by-plays of these chess matches that they're in and it's just so fun. It's cool to read about the competition, all the different players. Nolan and Mallory are really interesting characters. They're both both kind of mysterious in a way. I feel like that's the norm for a lot of chess players. More so Nolan than Mallory and I just love like their dynamic right now and their weird friendship slash relationship slash enemies almost. Like I don't even know what to call them right now. It's also a really fun read because there's like so much attention on chess culture in this. Nolan is like the bad boy of chess that everyone is obsessed with. He's kind of like the main reason why so many people are getting into 
the chest. You're also getting like the gossip slash paparazzi point of view in this, which is really, really interesting to me. I don't know if I'm enjoying it because of the romance or because of the chest right now, but it's a really, really fun read. Enjoying it more than I thought I was going to. If I had to pick something that I'm not liking about this book, it's probably like Mallory's at home situation because I think I mentioned it in the beginning, but she basically had to step up and kind of help out more with her family. I think her 14 year old sister is incredibly like rude and disrespectful towards Mallory. But other than that, I'm very much enjoying this. We are gonna keep going. I'm hoping to finish it up tonight. been reading for 11 hours and 13 minutes. We are creeping up on the halfway mark, which is super exciting. This book literally has me like kicking and giggling the entire way through. It's still very chess heavy. This whole book literally just revolves around chess and the game of chess, but the little touch of romance that we're getting in here, it's like filling my heart up with so much happiness and joy. There's something so different and fun about this book. We're getting that touch of romance without the characters really romancing. If that makes sense, we've gotten into the part of the book where we see Mal and Nolan actually teaming up and working together. The dynamic between him and Mallory is just so sweet and cute. It's literally giving off like love at first sight vibes, which I'm usually not the biggest fan of, but with this story, it absolutely works and I'm obsessed with it. So I also have to say, I really like the way that this is reading so far. Her writing style isn't one that I typically fly through, but the way she's writing this storyline specifically, you're like jumping around time periods pretty fast and I really like that because it keeps me very interested. I'm really really enjoying this right now. I don't want it to end. I know we have to finish it and I already know what book we're actually going to jump into right after this one. May be our final one because it's a massive, literally massive book and I've kind of been dreading picking it up again and we'll talk all about it when we get there but just wanted to give you guys my final check-in for this adorable cutie YA book. We're gonna wrap it up and we're gonna go from there. I just finished Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros and I'm I'm just in shock. We surpassed the 24 hour reading mark yesterday actually. So I stopped it at 24 hours and 17 minutes. First, we are going to talk all about Check and Me because that's really the last time I actually talked to you guys and I finished this book three days ago and then I spent like the last two days tackling Iron Flame. I didn't vlog too much of this book and talking to you guys about it because going into it I was kind of like in a slump with it already. I had read like 10 or 15 chapters of this book and I just wasn't getting into it and I was getting really annoyed with Violet and kind of just like the whole storyline. So going into it I was already slightly dreading it but we'll talk all about this in a second. We finished Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. This is this was so adorable guys. I feel like I can't say too much about it without giving spoilers. Everything I've already voiced about this book is still very much how I feel. This was adorable. Absolute perfection. Allie Hazelwood 
is a queen. I'm obsessed with her writing style. I knew going into this, I was going to love this book and eat it up, especially because it revolves around chess. I ended up reading this four stars. Nolan and Mallory's whole little relationship throughout this entire story is so stinking cute. Nolan is the number one chess player in the world, and Mallory is definitely giving him a run for his money because she is also such an incredible chess player. And just watching their relationship kind of build up throughout the story and play out was just so beautiful. I did hit a point in the story. It was kind of like the big plot twist and it was a little bit annoying and that's kind of what kept me from rating this five stars. The plot twist in this, I kind of predicted. Like I knew it was gonna happen and it's not why I was upset with it. I was more upset with how it kind of played out and how Mallory reacted. Mallory just turned so annoying for like five chapters straight. At the same time, I had to keep reminding myself that she's 18 in this and the stuff that she's going through in the story is so crazy and it's a lot to handle. So I had to keep reminding myself that because I was just getting so frustrated with her character and I was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be like a two-star read now because I can't stand Mallory. I almost feel like she was self-sabotaging herself throughout this story and she was always running away from like the good things and it just was driving me crazy. But nonetheless, she does kind of redeem herself towards the end, which I was very happy about. This was really cute though. I love the ending of this because it's not like straightforward what happens and I kind of like that. It leaves us with a little bit of a mystery. I really like the way she wrote the ending of this. But Mallory and Nolan were so, so sweet. I don't know what it is and how she does it, but Allie Hazelwood writes the best book couples. The chemistry between Nolan and Mallory was just so sweet and beautiful. And I did take a lot of very cute quotes out of this book. I don't know. I'm just going to be thinking about them now for the rest of the year. That's usually how it goes when it comes to Allie Hazelwood. But such an amazing book, beautifully written. If you enjoy chess, if you play chess, you will probably eat this book up just like I did. Even if you don't know chess or play chess, you'll still most likely really like this. When we finished that book, I think we were at the 12 hour, maybe like 12 hour and a half mark. And I immediately jumped back in to Iron Flame. I knew going into this book that I was going to go over our 24 hour mark just because I'm a very slow reader, especially when it comes to fantasy books like this. There's just so much going on in this storyline. And I knew it was gonna take me so, so long to get through. But when I reached the 24 hour mark, I think I was around page 400. So I knew I was gonna go past it. I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt for not keeping the time we're going to see like how long this book took me to finish but I think it probably would have been closer to like the 30 hour mark because I was just reading this at such a slow pace. There's a lot going on in it. The first book is Fourth Wing and I absolutely love that book. I ate it up and I actually flew through it pretty fast but for some reason the beginning of this book just wasn't catching my attention and I wasn't really interested in it and Violet in the beginning was just so irritating. Like I understand her point of view and her feelings but there were just moments where I was like oh my gosh I want I want to say around the halfway mark is when I felt like I was really getting into it again and enjoying it. We started to really dive in to the main storyline and the craziness that is happening in this world right now. The one thing I would say too about this book is I feel like it moved so much slower than Fourth Wing and I feel like that's why I had a hard time kind of getting into it at first. But nonetheless, there were still like so many incredible scenes in this book. I'm still living for Zayden. He is probably one of my favorite fantasy male main characters I've ever read about. He's just something in this series guys I don't know I'm just obsessed with him and the interactions between him and Violet I was just like kicking and giggling and gave me all the happy butterflies the romance in this so cute so beautiful so many quotes that I will be thinking about for a very long time. With that being said though, for like the romance aspect of this, there's a lot of going back and forth. I feel like there was a lot of having the same fight over and over again, which kind of drove me crazy. The ending of this book made it a four star for me. At first it was definitely leaning towards a three star and then I bumped it up to like a 3.5 once we hit the halfway mark. And then I want to say like the last like 75 pages bumped it up to a four star for me just because the ending and all the action and 
craziness that was happening in this book really got me, of course. Cliffhanger, not happy about it, mainly because I don't know when book three is going to come out. The last 75 pages too just like brought out all of my emotions. I was super happy and in love, then I was sobbing and heartbroken, and then I got really angry at one point, and then I think I was just in denial like the last two chapters. I was like, okay. So that happened. We finished Iron Flame. We surpassed our 24 hour mark, which I guess brings us to the end of our reading vlog, which I feel like is kind of getting a little long already. So Iron Flame was really good. I heard a lot of people say that they didn't really like it compared to Fourth Wing. They felt Iron Flame was just like a little off and iffy for them. I understand that point of view just because it took me so long to get into the book. I feel like once you get into like the action and main storyline, it does really take off. I really like when I do like 24 hour readathons like this because when I do them for 24 hours straight, I literally feel deceased at the end of them. So this one was actually really fun. It took place over the course, I want to say of like four days maybe. It really wasn't that long. Sometimes I drag these vlogs out for so long. I think the last one I did, honestly, I dragged out for almost two weeks. This one was pretty successful and fun. I'm really happy about it because we also got through three books that I really wanted to get through this month and kind of end 2023 with. So I'm really happy about that. I'm happy we finished Iron Flame because I was honestly really scared about that one. I didn't think I was going to finish it before the year ended just because I wasn't really getting into it, but still in denial about that book if you're wondering. I hope you guys enjoyed reading with me. If you made it this far in the video, comment down below an emoji that correlates with your favorite book of this reading vlog. For Love Redesigned, I'd put a little house emoji. For Check and Mate, I'd put a little chess piece. And then for Iron Flame, I would put the dragon. The next few days are going to be quite busy because we are creeping up on the holidays. I can't believe how quickly this entire month has been flying by, but Christmas and New Year's is right around the corner. I'm hoping to do maybe a fun little vlog for you guys. Get into my yearly reset routine because Januarys are pretty rough for me. <laughs> Stay tuned for all of that fun stuff. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season and I'll see you in my next video.